Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at installing the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver on a 2022 Jeep Renegade. Now this is what your hitch is going to look like when it's installed and it is an exposed cross tube meaning you are going to see the entire hitch or at least uh, the main part of it. It does bolt up in the frame but you will see most of it. Now not to worry though, uh, it gives it kind of a neat look on a Jeep, a little bit more utility and speaking of utility, it's a 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube opening which is really great. You're going to have a ton of different accessories you can pick for this whether it be a ball mount a bike rack or a cargo carrier and all of those accessories are going to stay in place with a 5 8 pin and clip now the hitch does not come with pin and clip a lot of your accessories will come with one so that's something to look out for when you're choosing accessories and if you want to pick up a locking version we have those available as well which i think is really nice because you can leave your accessory on the back of the vehicle locked in place and not have to worry about someone walking away with it then we have a plate style safety chain loop here, so your standard S hook or even a larger clevis style should work just fine on here. And uh, that's going to be nice if you're pulling a trailer. And speaking of that, you're going to want to adhere to the weight capacities of the hitch. And this one has a gross trailer weight rating of 3,500 pounds. And that's going to be the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded up. It also has a tongue weight rating of 525 pounds, which is going to be the downward pressure that's put on the inside of the receiver tube opening. And that's going to be a lot of your suspended accessories like your cargo carriers or bike racks. And at 525, that's going to be decent. You'll be able to load up a four bike bike rack pretty well full and not have to worry about overloading it. So I will recommend taking a look at the vehicle's owner's manual to see what it's capable of towing and then compare that with the hitch numbers as well as all of your towing accessories. Make sure you're not overloading any of them and that way you stay safe. A few quick measurements from the center of the hitch pin hole to the furthest point of the rear fascia. We're looking right at about five inches, and that's going to be important for some of your folding accessories like your cargo carrier bike racks in the stowed position. They can get pretty close to the rear fascia and sometimes not even fold up. So take a look at that when choosing accessories. It's also important when choosing a ball mount as well. Uh, that way you can make sure that it's far enough out so your coupler's not hitting when you're trying to hook up your trailer. And speaking of that, we're going to check our ground clearance, and this one's pretty low at 10 inches. So if you're uh, picking up a ball mount, you can determine whether you need a rise or a drop by taking that measurement and comparing it with the coupler on your trailer. Now, something to keep in mind with that low ground clearance is any of your suspended accessories like those cargo carrier bike racks, it's going to extend past the vehicle. So as you go up an incline, they're going to want to tilt towards the ground. So it's definitely something you want to keep in mind when you have it loaded up and you're going up an incline or on some rocky or rough terrain. As far as the installation goes, this one isn't horrible. Uh, it can be a little bit tricky. There's going to be some drilling out of a hole in the frame rail that's going to enlarge that to get your hardware in place, and you are going to have to bend back some heat shields. Um, overall, it's not horrible. Uh, I'm going to walk you through every single step to make sure you get it installed. This will probably take, I would say, maybe two hours, give or take, and you probably want to have an extra set of hands to really get it raised up and get that hardware in place. So let's take a look at it so you can get your hitch installed. For a beginner installation, we're going to go to each of the fender liners and we're going to loosen that up, uh, not completely remove it, but be able to move it out of the way because we have bolts that go into the side of the frame. It's going to get kind of tricky uh, to get that hardware in unless we move this out. That's pretty easy. Um, there's going to be some Phillips head screws as well as some 10 millimeters. So I do recommend having a small ratchet with a bit or a very small um, ratchet that may have uh, you know, Phillips. So either way, you're going to head over to your fender line and there's going to be two of them that we'll remove here. So this is the one that's a little bit tricky. You could probably use a stubby screwdriver to get to this one, but uh, it is a little bit trickier to get to this, so having the right tools will definitely help. Now, throughout this process, I recommend having a nice organized spot to keep your hardware. It's going to make reinstallation that much easier. Now, along with these two Phillips, there's also going to be two 10 millimeter screws that are a little bit hidden, um, but you can see there's an indention in the plastic straight ahead. So I have an extension here with a 10 millimeter socket. So we'll go ahead and get this removed. Now on the bottom side, there is one more Phillips screw. We'll go ahead and get this removed. And at that point, we should be able to get our fender liner kind of uh, pulled out and uh, again we're not removing it we're mostly just making it to where we can kind of push it out of the way to get our hardware in so uh, it's kind of clipped into the rear bumper uh, plastic there so we'll just pry that out real quick now 
and this should give us that extra room because our hardware is going to live kind of straight back there so this should make it a lot easier. Now we're going to be removing rubber plugs that are on our frame rail and uh, there's going to be one on the bottom and take a look at the frame rail. So our mounting points are going to be this spot here, there's a rubber plug, we'll just pry that out. Um, and this is where we're going to be feeding our hardware, so we are going to need to enlarge that. But there's also two more mounting points that are on the side here, so just kind of reach up. You should be able to find those rubber plugs, and there should be two of them, so just go ahead, pull those out. Now this access hole that we have here, again, this is where we're going to pass our hardware. You're going to see our carriage bolt as well as the spacer block that's going to need to feed in there. Uh, they're quite a bit wider, so you're going to want to make some notches here, and there's a few different ways you can do that. If you have a Dremel, you can take that wheel and just kind of run it across and make that notch to where it'll pass through. You can use a hole saw, you can use a step bit. I have a, a burr bit here, so I'm going to just grind back the edges on each side and then just kind of test fit to make sure that the head of the carriage bolt passes through and we should be clear. But for now, I'll go ahead and get this grinded out and show you how it looks. So I've gone ahead and grinded this out. I ended up using a Dremel wheel and just kind of cut wide and then grinded that out. The main thing is, is you can get your carriage bolt passed through. Um, you may have to kind of put it at some angle here to kind of get that in, but the main thing is this can pass. Um, now as far as this raw exposed metal, that can turn to rust and cor corrosion long term. So wherever we've made those grind marks or cuts, we're going to go ahead with some spray paint and just kind of coat that. It really doesn't matter, uh, clear coat, black, whatever you have handy, just to kind of coat that raw edge. Now to get our mounting hardware in place, we're going to be using a fish wire technique. So you're going to find this coiled cable and we're going to take the coiled end and we'll start in the back hole or I guess the hole that's closest to the front of the vehicle and take the coiled end and feed it back towards that hole that we enlarged. Now you may need to reach up there. Sometimes you can throw a bend in there to make it a little bit easier, but you're going to want that coiled end to pop through. And uh, I'm going to take this tail end and just put a little bend to kind of prevent that from pulling back in the hole, but also it'll help when we put the hitch in place. So now at this point, grab your spacer block and you can take this and just feed this into the frame. And then grab your carriage bolt and then thread this on that coiled end. And then on our other end, once we feed our carriage bolt into the frame rail, you may have to kind of go in at a slight, slightly different angle if you need to. You can kind of do it this way, whatever works best. Because once it's in the frame rail, we'll be able to pull the cable or our wire and just kind of jostle it around a little bit. And you should be able to get this to pull through on the frame rail. Now I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same process for this one, and then I'll show you a reverse fish wire technique to get this one in place. So for the reverse fish wire technique, pretty easy here. Just take your spacer block and you can kind of hold on to that, but feed that over the coiled end. We'll then take our carriage bolt, feed this up first. And then your spacer block. And then you just pull this through. Now that spacer block might hit on the back side here of the frame, so if you need to, you can put a screwdriver in there, just kind of push it back up to where it rotates. We should be able to get our carriage bolt to pass in. Just like that. So now, we'll just go ahead and repeat on the other side, getting all of our hardware in place. With an extra set of hands, we're gonna go ahead and get our hitch in place. Uh, we'll feed our fish wires through the corresponding holes. And what we're gonna do as we raise this up, you actually want those studs that are on the side of the frame to be inside of the frame. And that way, when we raise it up, we can pull that through and that's gonna create a holding point for the hitch. So do that on both sides and that way the hitch can support itself and then we can get the rest of the hardware in place a little bit easier. So we'll just kind of feed this up over the exhaust and uh, pull your fish wires up along when you uh, put the hitch up. And again, we're gonna try to get these to align with the holes up there. And once we kind of have this in place, like I said, just kind of jostle that bolt around until we can get this to pull through. And that's gonna at least make this to where it's hands-free, kind of holding that in place. You can also get the other one kind of pulled through as well and do that on both sides. 
we're going to take our serrated flange nut and we're going to get these hand tight on each of the studs. And if you need to, you can put a little bit of pressure on this. We don't want this falling back in the frame rail. So you can either use a flathead, your finger, something along these lines to, uh, you're going to get the fish wire off and get this at least a couple threads started just to kind of hold it in place. Um, the main thing is you're not popping this back in the frame rail. So I'll get these taken off here. So get all your serrated flange nuts hand tightened in place. Now once you have all your hardware hand tightened in place, we'll come back with a three quarter inch socket and I'm going to start by tightening the bolts that go vertical first and that way it cinches it up and then we can tighten the side bolts. Now we don't need to get too crazy as far as cranking these down because we are going to come back with a torque wrench and get the torque setting perfect to where it'll be tight enough. Um, so really we're just trying to snug everything up here. We'll come back with our torque wrench and the torque settings are going to be found in the instruction manual. And we're going to torque these all down uh, to those required instructions. And if you need a torque wrench, we have these available here at eTrailer. You can generally go to an auto parts store and rent one for free. But this is going to ensure that it's going to be tight enough for the lifespan of the hitch for it to not get loose. But it's also not going to be too tight putting any stress on those threads. So we'll go through and finish torquing down the rest of our hardware. Now with all of our hardware tightened and torqued down properly, we'll go ahead and get our fender liners put back in place and all of that hardware tightened down as well. And then all that's left to do is load up your favorite accessory and hit the road. And that was a look at installation of the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver on a 2022 Jeep Renegade.